This is the story of the Pirates of the Caribbean and the Dead Man's Chest. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear this sound. Are you ready? Sail away with me now. High on the walls of a Turkish prison overlooking the sea, Captain Jack Sparrow hid in a wooden coffin, waiting for the guards to toss it into the ocean. As it hit the waves, Jack scrambled out. In his hand, he clutched a drawing of a key. Back on board his ship, the Black Pearl, Jack showed the drawing to his crew. Gentlemen, what do keys do? Keys unlock things. And whatever this key unlocks, inside there's something valuable. So we're setting out to find whatever this key unlocks. No. If we don't have the key, we can't open whatever it is we don't have that it unlocks. So what purpose would be served in finding whatever need be unlocked, which we don't have, without first having found the key what unlocks it? So they set off to find the key, but Jack's compass wasn't working properly, and he didn't know which way to sail. That night, as Jack paced the deck, a pale figure stepped from the shadows. It was Bootstrap Bill with a message. Time's run out, Jack. He sent me. Davy Jones. You made a deal with him too, Jack. You raised the pearl from the depths for you. Thirteen years you've been a captain. Technic Jack. You won't be able to talk yourself out of this. The terms would apply to me, apply to you as well. One soul bound to crew a hundred years of mothership. Yes, but the Flying Dutchman already has a captain, so there's really no... That is a locker for you. Jones is terrible, Leviathan will find you. You can drag the pearl back to the depths and you along with it. As Bootstrap spoke, a black spot appeared on Jack's hand. Terrified, he shouted at his crew. On deck, all hands! Run, keep running! Do we have a heading? Run! Land! Which port? In Zaypo! Said land! Any land! Help! Meanwhile, in Port Royal, Elizabeth Swan and Will Turner had their own troubles. Lord Cutler Beckett, head of the East India Trading Company, had arrested them for piracy. Beckett addressed his prisoner. By your efforts, Jack Sparrow was set free. I would like you to go to him and recover a certain property in his possession. Recover? At the point of a sword? Bargain. You will offer what amounts to a full pardon. Jack will be free, a privateer in the employ of England. Jack must find his place in the new world or perish. Not unlike you, Mr. Turner. You and your fiancé face the hangman's noose. So you get both Jack and the Black Pearl? A ship? Hardly. The item in question is considerably smaller and far more valuable. Something Sparrow keeps on his person at all times. A compass? Bring back that compass. Or there's no deal. Will accepted the deal. He left to tell Elizabeth who was still being held in a prison cell. Elizabeth was worried. Jack's compass. What does Beckett want with that? Does it matter? I have faith in you. Both of you. But when Will left, Elizabeth began making her own plans. Will searched the seas for days. At last, he spied the black pearl stranded on the beach of a deserted island. A deathly silence hung over the island. Will's shouts echoed strangely as he thrashed through the deep jungle. Jack! Jack Sparrow! Meanwhile, in Port Royal, Elizabeth escaped her prison cell, sneaked into Beckett's offices, and held him at gunpoint. I'm here to negotiate. I'm listening intently. These letters of Mark, they are signed by the king. You're making great efforts to ensure Jack Sparrow's freedom. Who's on the to Jack? Oh, really? To ensure Mr. Turner's freedom, then? I'll still want that compass. Disguising herself as a sailor, she stowed away on a ship to go in search of Will. 
as Will crashed through the jungle, cannibals surrounded him, numbing him with poison darts they carried him to their village. There on the throne of bones and skulls sat Jack Sparrow. Jack, it's me! Will Turner! Tell her to let me down! To Will's confusion and anger, Jack ignored him. But as the cannibals dragged Will away, Jack leaned towards him slightly. Save me. Will was horrified when he realized the truth. Jack was a captive too. High above a gorge hung two cages made of human bones and jammed full of Jack's pirate crew. A cannibal shoved Will inside a cage with Jack's first mate, Gibbs. The Pentecostus made Jack their chief, but he only remains chief as long as he acts like a chief. The Pelagostas believe that Jack is a god in human form. And they intend to do him the honor of releasing him from his fleshy prison. They'll roast him and eat him. The feast is about to begin. Jack's life will end. The drums stop. Will knew he had to do something. He ordered the pirates to swing the cages toward the canyon walls where thick vines grew. Rocking back and forth, the pirates grasped the vines. Come on, men! Put your legs through! Start the climb! But as they reached the top of the gorge, a cannibal guard saw them. He raced for the village, shouting the alarm. Bye -bye. Screaming in anger, the cannibals raced after the escaping pirates, leaving Jack alone. Taking his final chance to escape, Jack jerked himself free and sped toward the beach where the Black Pearl waited. He reached it just as Will and the rest of his crew raced up. Dodging hordes of screeching cannibals, the men leapt on board and cast off. Gibbs greeted his captain. Let's put some distance between us and this island and head out to open the sea. Yes for the first, yes for the second, but only insofar as we keep to the shallows as much as possible. Safe for a time, we'll ask Jack for his compass. Jack, uh, mm. Elizabeth isn't great. I need that compass of yours, Jack. I must trade it for her freedom. Finally, Jack made Will a deal. I shall trade you the compass if you will help me to find this. He showed him the drawing of an unusual key. When Will agreed, Jack told him there was only one person who could tell them where it was. The mysterious Tia Dalma. Later that night, they rode up a dark, swampy river to Tia Dalma's rambling shack. She was waiting for them, as if she had known they would come. <laughs> Tia Dalma nodded knowingly when Jack showed her the drawing of the key. Your key got to a chest. And it is what lay inside the chest you seek, don't it? You know what, David Jones, yes? What? Exactly did he put into the chest? Your mind and carve out your mind. Lock it away in a chest and hide the chest from the world. The key, he keep with him at all times. To get it, Will would have to sneak on board the Flying Dutchman ship and take the key from Jones. Tia Dalma told them where to seek the ghostly ship, and she gave Jack a jar of dirt. David Jones cannot step on land but once every ten years. Land is where you are safe, Jack Sparrow. And so you will carry land with you. As Jack and Will searched for the Flying Dutchman, they saw a shipwreck on a rocky shore. Jack's blood ran cold. This was the work of Davy Jones. As Will prepared to board the ship, Jack gave him some advice. If you do happen to get captured, just say Jack Sparrow sent you to settle his debt. Might save your life. On the ship deck, Will saw faceless dead men scattered everywhere. Suddenly the wind began to howl, and the ghostly flying Dutchman rose from the churning sea. later, Davy Jones stood before Will. What is your purpose here? Jack Sparrow. Send me to settle his death. Davy Jones was furious. <laughs> On board the Black Pearl, Jack watched and waited. 
Suddenly, he heard Davy Jones' angry voice behind him. You have a debt to pay. You have my payment. One soul to serve on your ship is already over there. One soul is not equal to another. Just how many souls do you think my soul is worth? Desperate to escape his dreaded fate, Jack bargained with Jones. So we still in blood? He mean, would bring him 100 souls in three days in exchange for his own freedom. Jones agreed. I keep the boy. A good faith payment. That leaves you only 99 more to go. <laughs> it seemed that Will would be doomed forever. Jack and his crew sailed to Tortuga to find souls for Davy Jones. There they met Jack's old enemy, James Norrington. Desperate and half-crazed, Norrington signed on. To Jack's amazement, so did someone else, Elizabeth Swan. She wanted Jack's help finding Will. Jack gave Elizabeth his compass. Poor Will has been press-ganged into Davy Jones's crew. All I want is to find Will. Well, there is a chest of unknown size and origin, and whoever possesses that chest possesses the leverage to command Jones to do whatever it is he or she wants. But this, this compass does not point north. It points to the thing you want most in this world. And what you want most in this world is to find the chest. Davy Jones, is it not? To save Will? By finding the chest of Davy Jones. In Elizabeth's hands, the compass worked. Steadily the needle swung around till it pointed to Ila Crucis, the Isle of Crosses. Aboard the Flying Dutchman, Will waited and watched for his chance to get the key. At last, one night, while Jones slept, Will crept into his quarters and carefully removed the key from the chain around his neck. Then he hurried to the longboat where his father waited. Now get yourself to land and stay there. It was always in my blood to die at sea. But it was not a fate I ever wanted for you. I'll find a way to sever Jones's hold on you and not rest until this blade pierces his heart. With that, Will rode away into the night. Many long, wet, cold hours later, a passing trading ship rescued Will from the longboat. Will begged the ship's captain to sail away as fast as he could, but it was too late. The Flying Dutchman was on the horizon. Will grew pale. I've done this all. With a sickening jolt, the ship lurched to a stop. The sea boiled with foam as a huge, slimy tentacle rose from the waves. Will watched the powers as it snatched the captain, threw him into the air, and broke him like a twig. It was the Kraken, sent by Jones to destroy Will and whoever helped him. Nothing and no one could stop it. Its huge tentacles swept screaming sailors into the sea, smashed the longboats, and snapped the mast in two. Will fell overboard. As he sank beneath the waves, he saw the Kraken pull the ship down. In an instant, all that was left was a trail of shattered wood and broken bodies. The shadow of the Flying Dutchman drifted above Will as he surfaced. He snatched at its arm and hauled himself up, clinging to a small crack in the wood. Above him, he heard one of the crew tell Davy Jones some disturbing news. The boy's not here. He must have been claimed by the sea. I am the sea. The chest is no longer safe. Charter course to Ila Crusades. Get me there first or there'll be the devil to pay. Wet and shaking with gold, Will hung on. He was still alive. And he would reach Ila Crusades with Davy Jones. At last, Jack and his crew reached Ila Crucis and rode ashore. Elizabeth led Jack and Norrington toward an ancient abandoned church. Then she stopped with a confused look. The compass needle suddenly began to spin. It doesn't work. And it certainly doesn't show you what you want most. Yes, it does. You're sitting on it. 
the pot? Jack pushed her aside as he and Norrington began to dig. They quickly uncovered a large chest. Inside it was a small chest of solid iron. And from inside that, they heard the rhythm of a muffled heartbeat. No one saw the flying Dutchman approach. As the cursed crew prepared to go ashore, Will swam to the beach. In no time, he found Jack, Elizabeth, and Norrington staring at the iron chest before them. It's real. You actually were telling the truth. I do that quite a lot. Your people are always surprised. With good reason. It was Will. He pushed his way through and made for the chest. I'm gonna kill Jones. Can't let you do that, William. Because if Jones is dead, who's to call his terrible beastie off the hunt? Hey. Only Davy Jones could control the Kraken. If Jones died, the monster would never stop. Jack's plan was to use the chest to make Jones call his monster off forever. Then Norrington stepped between them. He wanted to take the chest to Lord Cutler Beckett. Each man needed the chest for different reasons. They drew their swords, charged each other, and began the battle for the key. As Jack and the others fought, Jones' crew rose from the sea. Jack snatched the key from Will and opened the chest. He grabbed the heart, dashed to the beach, and stuffed it into his jar of dirt. But Jones' crew surrounded them. There was no escape. Suddenly, Norrington grabbed the chest and ran, drawing the fiends away. Into the boat. Don't wait for me. As the ghoulish crew closed in, Norrington dropped the chest. Here you go. In a flash, the crew and the chest disappeared. As the Black Pearl sped away, the Flying Dutchman shot up from the depths beside it and opened fire. Jack dropped his jar and it shattered at his feet. The heart was gone. Groaning, the Black Pearl shuddered to a stop. In the deathly silence, the Kraken rose from the sea. Will shouted orders to the terrified crew. Run out the cannons and hold for my signal! Blasted by the cannons, the Kraken drew back. But Will knew it would attack again. We have to get off the ship. But the Kraken had destroyed all the longboats except one. And Jack Sparrow was in it, rowing toward land. Will and the crew loaded the cargo net with barrels of gunpowder and swung it out over the rail. Then Will gave Elizabeth a rifle. Whatever you do, don't miss. He leapt on top and called out to the Kraken. Come on! With a roar, the Kraken shot up, tangling its tentacles on the cargo net. As Elizabeth took aim, the ship lurched, and she fell. Then she saw Jack. His compass had pointed him back to the Black Pearl and her. Jack grabbed the rifle and fired as Will leapt away. The gunpowder exploded, ripping the Kraken's tentacles apart and setting them on fire. Again, the Kraken fell back, but Jack knew it would return. Abandon ship into the longboat. Will and the crew rushed for the longboat, but Elizabeth turned to Jack. He came back. I always knew you were a good man. And then she kissed him. A long kiss that lasted as she pushed him backwards. Jack heard a loud click and opened his eyes. Elizabeth had chained him to the mast. It's after you, not the ship. It's not us. But this is the only way, don't you see? I'm not sorry. Jack smiled at Elizabeth. Ah. Elizabeth raced to the longboat and climbed in with Will and the others. Will looked around. Where's Jack? He let you stay behind to give us a chance. Go! From a distance, Will, Elizabeth, and the crew watched the Kraken pull the Black Pearl beneath the waves. Ship. A 
aboard the Flying Dutchman, Davy Jones' men set his chest down before him. He smiled as he began to open it. Jake smiles. I was dead to Seconds later, a terrible roar of anger rang out. His heart was gone. Far away in Port Royal, Norrington was brought before Lord Cutler Beckett. He placed the pardon documents, promised to Will and Elizabeth, before him. I took the liberty of filling in my name. If you intend to claim these, then you must have something to trade. Which was the compass. Best. He placed a burlap sack on Beckett's desk. The heart of Davy Jones. The crafty Beckett smiled. Days later, Will, Elizabeth, and Gibbs sat with the Adolva in her shack, remembering Jack. She studied them closely. And he sailed to the ends of the earth and beyond to fetch back with the Jack. They stared at her as if she was crazy. Then, as one person, they shouted, Aye! Tia Dalma was pleased. All right. But if you go and brave the weird and haunted shores at world's end, then you will need a captain who knows those waters. At the top of her stairs, the door opened, and Captain Barbosa walked into the room. 